In this demo, we're going to look at virtual hard disk requirements, specifically in Virtual Machine Manager, as they pertain to VM role gallery item deployments via the Windows Azure Pack portal. In the VM role authoring tool, I've loaded up an existing resource definition for a Windows 2012 server that contains a data disk. And if I look at the storage profile, we can see that I've parameterized both the OS virtual hard disk image as well as one data disk which will be made available at deployment time. Now if I look at the view definition of this resource definition, I can see that my OS virtual hard disk image also requires a tag of Windows Server 2012. So the next thing we're going to do is jump onto a Virtual Machine Manager server and look at the virtual hard disk requirements that will make these images available to users at deployment time. So in a nutshell, there are four or five requirements of virtual hard disks in Virtual Machine Manager as they pertain to gallery items being deployed through the Windows Azure Pack portal. The first one is that the library server, or share, which contains the virtual hard disks, must be exposed to the cloud upon which the Windows Azure Pack portal is based. I've exposed two Virtual Machine Manager library shares to my production cloud. Looking at the virtual hard disks themselves, there are three or four requirements depending on your resource definition and resource extension resource requirements. The three requirements that are always necessary for an operating system disk image are that the VHD or VHDX have a family name, a release, and an operating system value set. And if I look at the properties of this virtual hard disk, I see that it does have a family, it does have a release in the required format of x.x.x.x, and finally, it has an operating system set. So everything looks okay from this perspective. We haven't verified the tags on this virtual hard disk, but we'll do that after we walk through a mock deployment in the Windows Azure Pack portal and see if everything looks good. I'm logged in as a tenant to the Windows Azure Pack portal, and I'm going to attempt to deploy a virtual machine role from the item that we looked at in the authoring tool just a couple minutes ago. So I select New Virtual Machine Role from Gallery. And as you'll recall, the item we were looking at was a Windows Server 2012 uh, Virtual Machine Role with a data disk. So I select that gallery item, click Next, give it a name, click Next, and unfortunately I receive an error. What we're going to do is go inspect that virtual hard disk in Virtual Machine Manager and make sure that all of our requirements are actually set properly. So back in Virtual Machine Manager, I've launched the Virtual Machine Manager PowerShell interface and I'm going to go ahead and get a reference to that virtual hard disk. Now that I have a reference to the virtual hard disk, we'll look at the tag property. And I can see that there are no tags present on the virtual hard disk. And if I look at all of the properties of the disk, I can confirm, again, there is no tag present. But if I think back to my resource definition, I remember that it does have a requirement of a tag, and that tag is Windows Server 2012. So I can go ahead and use the set SE virtual hard disk commandlet, and specify the virtual hard disk reference, and use the tag parameter to supply the required tag of Windows Server 2012. Now that that's set, I can see that this virtual hard disk does have a tag, and that tag is Windows Server 2012. We'll now move back to the Windows Azure Pack portal and try our deployment again. So back in the Windows Azure Pack portal, we're going to try to deploy that same gallery item. We'll simply move down, select the item again, give it a name, and we see that we've gotten further and my virtual hard disk does show up here. However, I don't have an option to choose any available data disks. So let's see data disk requirements inside of Virtual Machine Manager. Data disk requirements are very similar to operating system requirements with one exception. They do require a family and a release, so a name and a version, and they also require that the operating system be set to none. So I have two data disks that I want to make available to my end users, a 16 gig data disk and a 60 gig data disk. So we'll start with the 16 gig and we'll give it a family along with a release. 
and will confirm that the operating system is indeed set to none. We'll do the same thing for the 60 gig data disk, giving it a name along with a release. And again, make sure that the operating system is set to none. We'll now go back to the Windows Azure Pack portal and see if our deployment can proceed further. So back in the Windows Azure Pack portal, we'll try this gallery item one more time. We'll select it, give it a name, move forward, and we see that now I not only have an operating system disk available to me, but also the two choices of data disks. That concludes our demo, and I hope you found it useful and informative. Thank you very much.